Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale, Srimate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namane, Namaste Sarsati Deve, Godavani Pracharane, Nirvishesha Shunyavadi, Pachta Chade Shatarane. That's just there for the pretty colors. <laughs> As mentioned, this conference has come full circle back to Durban. And what have we done in the last five years? And what are we looking to do? In 2010, we were a brand new BBT division, just starting out, building a team, pulling together some funds, learning the basics of BBT work. Now we're well established. We've built a strong team. This is some of us. We're gaining expertise. Over the last three years, we've gained a toehold in academia with our annual Bhaktivedanta Swami lecture. And starting this past year, we've begun contributing for the temple project in Mayapur. We gave $10,000, not huge, but a good start. Srila Prabhupada wanted the BBT to do two things, publish books, and fund temple construction. So now we're doing that. And then there's our annual BBT conferences, like this one. This one's in Ghana last year, where we bring the BBT closer together with its main stakeholders, the ISKCON devotees. As Govardhan Prabhu mentioned, wherever we've held this conference, book distribution has increased, and the entire cost of the conference is borne by generous sponsors so that we don't have to dig into BBT funds at all. In 2010, we were excited about being the latest BBT division. We're not the new kid on the block anymore. <laughs> but now in 2015, we're excited about taking a leading role in the global BBT. Last year, our Govardhan Prabhu became a global BBT trustee, and he's especially taken responsibility for guiding the global organization and strategy for Back to Godhead. This year, our Rustic Bandhu Prabhu from Johannesburg has become the executive manager of the BBT to help us out in doing our global work. In 2010, we mentioned that the BBT offers many opportunities for service. Oh, didn't want to do that. I see, okay. An extra button there they didn't tell me about. <laughs> we showed this slide and we said, pick a program and develop it. Lots of opportunities. So two devotees who did just that, picked a program, were Hari Balabhas and his wife Anuradha Saki. Even before they were initiated, they came to us with a program already worked out for distributing Srila Prabhupada's books in South, two South African libraries. So we took them on board, they developed the program wonderfully, expanded it to other countries as well. Now they're leaving South Africa for Canada, where they want to keep serving the BBT. So we'd like to wish them well and thank them for their very substantial service 
to BBT Africa. For other devotees, plenty of service is still available. Pick a program and develop it. Krishna consciousness means using whatever abilities we have in Krishna's service. We're looking for help in most of these areas. Young devotees are special, especially welcome. Older devotees are not excluded. <laughs> and you can learn, as I've done, on the job. If you're interested or you know anyone, just please speak with us. In particular, we're looking to diversify our management at the trustee level. This year we appointed Mukundagri Das, who spoke earlier, as a BBT Africa trustee. But apart from him and me, all the trustees and managers at the All Africa BBT are Indians. <laughs> and in fact, all South African Indians. So we're looking to add at least one more very capable African person and from outside South Africa. So let's see who Krishna may send. In 2010, we spoke of providing you pamphlets. We now have them in Zulu, Kosa, English, French, Chinese. Great resource, resource, underused. You'll hear more about that later today. Since our first conference, we've published books in several local languages. And as you've advised us, we've taken care to make the graphics on their covers suitable for African readers. Okay. More books are in the pipeline in English, Swahili, Afrikaans, Soto, four and a half million speakers, Chichewa, Malawi, seven million, and Amharic, 17 million speakers. Following Srila Prabhupada's instructions, instead of doubling the price as he told us to do for other books, we provide African language books at cost. So half of what we would normally charge. And we're able to do that with help from our donors. <laughs> In 2010, we said we wanted to provide a steady supply of books at the best price, printed wherever it's best. How are we doing? For many years, West Africa simply had no books. Now that's changing. This year, with support from Prem Vilas Prabhu, an Indian doctor in America, we were able to send a big shipment of books to Ghana. The devotees were blissful. They had a fine marathon. Providing books for Nigeria is still a challenge. It's a work in progress. But as for French, <laughs> Francophone Africa, 115 million speakers, needs a steady supply of small books at ultra affordable prices. And we haven't yet been able to provide them. That's been perhaps our biggest failure, but we're not giving up. On a brighter note, this year we've begun printing high quality books here in South Africa. Uh, we're lately printing with Parl Media, one of South Africa's, South Africa's leading printers. Go to a bookstore and see books by major publishers published, printed by Parl Media. We're using acid-free paper, which means it lasts. This is what acid does to paper, turns it yellow and brittle. Within only a few years, the acid is in the pulp itself. But acid-free paper 
can stay white and strong for a hundred years or more. And the paper we're using is FSC certified, which means it comes from forests certified by the Forest Stewardship Council to be ecologically well managed. So quality books, locally printed, and at a very good price. Something we didn't talk about at our first conference was non-print media. It's important to us, and it is on our roadmap. Many people would rather hear than read. And audiobooks can be especially useful for languages that are mainly spoken. In Ghana, for example, the language millions of people prefer to speak is Twi. But if you give them a book in Twi, they prefer to read English. So for Twi, audiobooks could be the way to go. We'd also like to, be, to look into making books available on phones. Nigeria has 174 and a half million people and 172.7 million active mobile phones. <laughs> Ghana has 25 million people, 28.7 million <laughs> active phones. There's a nonprofit organization, World Reader, dedicated to essentially streaming books onto ordinary, low cost, non smart phones for people in developing countries. So our books could be among those offered, and we're already in touch with World Reader about that. We spoke with them at the Johannesburg Book Fair last week. Meanwhile, we're partnering, partnering with the South Africa Library for the Blind to come out with the perfection of yoga in Braille. They're working on it a little slow. It's a government enterprise. <laughs> now, looking at Africa as a whole, Africa has about 53 countries. By my last count, ISKCON has centers in 11. We're active in about five or so more, and we've done little forays into still a few more. So roughly 42 of the 53 or so African countries don't have ISKCON centers, and perhaps 30, more than half, have never seen devotees at all. So for adventurous preachers and book distributors, Africa offers vast opportunities. Coming back to where we are at present, in West Africa, our problem is resources. In East and South Africa, our problem is insularity. Insular comes from the Latin word that means island. At our conference in 2010, we said that focusing our efforts on a niche market of less than 5% of Africa's people simply isn't what Srila Prabhupada had in mind, even if that Indian niche is a great niche. Our Indian audience is certainly important, but what about the Africans? This is a special challenge for Durban. We've got the biggest Indian community outside India. It's easy and natural to expand within that community, but then we wind up insular. I'm told that when Srila Prabhupada came to South Africa, he expressed three desires, to have a temple in Chatsworth, Jagannath deities, and Indian, European, and African devotees chanting Hare Krishna. Forty years later, our African outreach is still not much more than token, but giving Krishna consciousness to the African people was what Srila Prabhupada most wanted to do 
in Africa. So some forward-looking devotees will need to take the lead. In this regard, special appreciation to Vibhu Chaitanya Prabhu for ordering good numbers of Zulu books and personally going out and distributing them. And special praise to Rukmini Dasi and the Bhakti Yoga Society. The leaders for the new South Africa are in the colleges. Bright young African people are coming in, co in touch with Krishna consciousness through the Bhakti Yoga Society. Not everyone will feel inspired to personally reach out to African people or feel capable of doing so. In that case, you can give your support to African preaching, especially financial support, both as individuals and as temples. We can check out what proportion of our resources we're dedicating to reaching out to communities beyond the Indian island. And we can ask ourselves whether we can and should do more. At our conference here five years ago, we promised to support you in reaching out to African people by providing publications in their languages, priced for their pockets, and meant to create a spiritual revolution in their lives. We're doing that, so it's an opportunity for us to work together to make that happen. On another point, ultimately we want to not only to distribute books, but to foster lasting relationships with our readers. We want to be in touch with people repeatedly, steadily, so that they can become progressively enlightened in Krishna consciousness. To think of Krishna, become devotees of Krishna, serve Krishna, and dedicate their lives to Krishna and be happy forever. <coughs> Here in South Africa, an outstanding tool that we have for this is the subscription program for Back to Godhead. This program was given shape here in Durban many years ago by Jagadananda Pandit Prabhu and others, and it's become a sterling success. It steadily brings people the message of Krishna. It keeps us hooked up with those people. Following up, and incidentally, at the Radha Radhanath temple, it covers nearly half the temple's expenses. 150,000 out of roughly 320,000 rent month. So if the number of subscribers were to double, BTG subscriptions alone would cover nearly all of the temple's expenses. Given how much a temple can achieve with BTG, both for income and for outreach, uh, if I were in the, temple's, the temple leader's shoes, I'd be looking for every possible way to sign up more subscribers and then follow up by making those subscribers close friends, making sure they have books, ideally full sets of books, and that they're taking part as much as they can in Lord Chaitanya's Sankirtan movement. More bright news. Over the past several years, book distribution in Africa has been steadily growing. Thanks especially to our powerhouses, Kenya, Mauritius, and South Africa. Since Vibhu Chaitanya became the National Book Distribution Manager for South Africa, we've seen a significant increase of books distributed here, for which we're grateful to all the devotees who are taking part. And we hear that this year, the results are going to be still bigger. 
There's no limit to how many books we can distribute or how much this book distribution can accomplish. As Srila Prabhupada said, push on this one activity and your all success will be there. So finally, we want to build a stronger relationship of enthusiasm and trust in which the temples, the devotees, and the BBT work closely together for shared goals. The material world is the world of mutual selfish exploitation. Everyone's out to get something at the cost of someone else. And everyone, therefore, is on guard, apprehensive, and fearful. But on the Krishna Conscious Platform, everyone is interested in sacrificing for Krishna, and no one has any other interest than pleasing Krishna and seeing others please Krishna. This is the spirit we want to foster with the BBT to help the temples succeed in their mission. As the temples succeed, the BBT will automatically flourish and together we can help Srila Prabhupada bring to the people of Africa the transcendental message of Krishna. Thank you all very much.